Okay, welcome to everyone who is joining us um, for via teleconferencing. Let's just make sure first off. Okay, everybody focus so that we'll be focused for those online. Okay, everybody good? Sir. Okay. James, you want to start? We're going to blow through really quickly the um, the standard unknowns and then get into um, lightning rounds. Excellent. Is that a usual icon? So, um, if we were playing Jeopardy, you would get extra points for phrasing it as a question. <laughs> Very good. So, is it an angiolipoma? Yes, of course, you knew it was an angiolipoma. So, angiolipoma is a lump of fat with capillary sized vessel. However, there are also areas here that have some mixoid change with ropey collagen. So, it also has features of. I'm trying to remember the one that had the ropey is like the key thing there. Pleomorphic bronzing? Right. Yeah, well, or spindle cell. Spindle cell, that's what it is. Spindle cell lipoma. And you have bits of that. Sorry, so fat, ropey yeah. collagen, and mixoid connective <laughs> tissue are, <laughs> are key for that. Okay, Jessica, what do you think uh, here? Is this a hibernoma? And again, for Jeopardy, that would be excellent. <laughs> is this a hibernoma? <laughs> So, hibernoma is a tumor of brown fat. So, you have multiloculated lipocytes. And typically, characteristically, the nucleus is round, not scalloped. So, unlike a lipoblast, where the nucleus is typically scalloped, these usually are non scalloped, round nuclei. And let's, for those online, we always have to go up a couple of powers, so. Okay. Let's see, round. Got it the other way. There we go. Round nucleus, non scalloped. There. Okay. So it's tumor of brown fat. And you do, of course, know that bears do not actually hibernate, so that is a misnomer. Bear is going to torpor. I knew that was troubling you. So. Okay, Dr. Braun. A lot, a lot of the stroma is kind of more mixoid here. In fact, areas where it is just pools of mixoid snot here with vessels. And floating in that mixoid snot, how would you describe these elongated, narrow pieces of collagen that one could almost tie into a knot? Ropey. Ropey, yes. So there's ropey collagen. They're definitely not normal size. The collagen bundles, it's ropey collagen. So you have mucin, ropey collagen, just your more true variant of a spindle cell. Lipoma. So spindle cell lipoma, correct. And the spindle cells are often neuroid looking, so they're often um, S-shaped, similar to a neurofibroma. So the biggest, the toughest differential is probably diffuse neurofibroma, which infiltrates fat, versus um, spindle cell lipoma. The other thing that you might struggle with is DFSP, dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans versus spindle cell lipoma, because DFSP will infiltrate fat, and spindle cell lipoma is the fat with spindle cells um, and lipocytes. Both will um, immunostaining easily differentiate spindle cell lipoma from DFSP. Is that a question? 
That's a question. Uh, so <laughs> CD34... I would think they both might have CD34. They are both CD34 positive. And most of the other immunostains that you might do also fall flat. So it comes back usually to H and E, and you have to be very cautious of them. The morphology of the cells can be helpful because in a spindle cell lipoma, the cells are spindled in all planes of section whereas in DFSP it is a disc-like nucleus that appears narrow and spindled if looked at from the side, and um, oval and pale if looked at on FOSS. So seeing those alternating directions of the nucleus can be very helpful in DFSP. Okay, Rob. Like a so what are the features of a pleomorphic lipoma? You do, in fact, see fluoret giant cells, which are these um, greeth giant cells with overlapping <coughs> hyperchromatic nuclei. You also see stellate hyperchromatic cells that look somewhat like radiation fibroblasts. And then your background is fat, mixoid tissue, ropey collagen just like a spindle cell lipoma. So it's basically a background of spindle cell lipoma superimposed upon which are radiation-like fibroblasts and fluoret giant cells. Be careful of the clinical. This should be, this should shell out as a nice circle and be on the upper back superficial tissue of an older person. If it looks like a pleomorphic fibroma, but is it, it is a deep proximal extremity or retroperitoneal tumor, it's a liposarcoma. So, um, you know, these are superficial and small and well circumscribed tumors. We got more seats at the scope if anyone wants to have a <laughs> I see. Okay, Brian. Uh, Mixoid and the mucin. Is it the same color as the other mucin that we've been seeing? This seems a lot more blue, bluish gray. A blue gray um, characteristic of chondroitin sulfate of sulfated mucin? Um, with that in mind, <laughs> <laughs> maybe put this in the cartilaginous category? So it looks kind of cartilaginous with the mucin and with the lacunae and cells. Um, are the, um, what do you think about the nuclei? Um, Pleomorphic and hyperchromatic? Yeah, I think so. So it would be some kind of a bad cartilaginous thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't see it. My first thought was like a pleomorphic um, lipoma, but again, I don't see the like, fluorite giant cells. There's no kind of that ropey collagen. And do you see any fat? Um, not so m Well, it kind of looks like it's just being engulfed or surrounded or infiltrated. Yeah, so so I agree, no no fat, some vacuolated cells, in fact some multi vacuolated cells mm -hmm. that have a bizarre name of physoliferous like cells. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chordoma? Chordoma. Chordoma. So a chordoma is a tumor of the that differentiates towards the primitive notochord, um, which is why it looks cartilaginous. True chordomas are um, deep axial tumors, usually sacral presacral type of lesions. They are um, often malignant in behavior and metastasize. When we see them in skin like this, it's metastatic chordoma. Um, but there are somewhat similar appearing tumors primary to skin that are paracordomas. Paracordomas are in the myoepithelioma group. So paracordoma is one end of a spectrum, the other end of which 
is occupied by mixed tumor of skin. So mixed tumor of skin to pericordoma is the spectrum of myo epitheliomas. They tend to be S100 positive, keratin positive, and the chordomas often share that. Um, the pericordomas tend to be benign. The chordomas, certainly the ones we see in skin, are malignant because they're all metastatic. Um, so so that um, pretty much covers that group. So, so in the dermis, there's a mix. <coughs> dermis and sub is kind of a mix of uh, kind of a not appearing fat and uh, collagen. Um, it's not, like well, it's, like, um, or it's not encapsulated. It's certainly not encapsulated. Uh, and in fact, um, at scan, looks almost like a, a bump, right? Like mm, a yeah. 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 skin tag or, or bump. Yeah, looks like actually, let's see if everyone online can see that. So where there is fat replacing the dermis like that, it one could be a fatty skin tag. You sort of need clinical information. It could be uh, um, one of the polypoid lesions of Gold's syndrome, um, focal dermal hypoplasia, which is actually not a hypoplasia of the dermis, but a neogenesis of fat within the dermis. Um, or it could be nevus lipomatosis. Those tend to be down around the um, lower lower back buttock region, typically often blashcoid in distribution. And um, but the it probably wouldn't be fair to ask without clinical, unless only one of them were a choice. One of those three. So nevus lipomatosis superficialis of Hoffman and Zarel. Okay. All right. So this one here looks look like a lot. Oh, there's a little bit of uh, adipose there, but the rest looks like fibrous tissue. Yep. I don't really see like vasculature or anything else. So I'm thinking right now like a fibrolipoma, unless there's something else. It looks so really well encapsulated. So Excellent thought. Fibrolipomas, do they have any cellularity? They tend, no, them? not really. They tend to be hypocellular, yeah. whereas this is hypercellular. So this is well circumscribed, involving fat. I see mm. very thin collagen bundles. One might even say ropey. I see fat. And then there are lots and lots and lots of nuclei that look spindly. Yeah, I'm thinking, well, like I said, that nuclei, then if that's, I wonder if that's smooth muscle, then if this is like the angio, um, uh, or angiomyolipoma. Um, so angiomyolipoma is, is a, a again, sure. a good thought. The smooth muscle tends to look like the spokes of a pinwheel. Mm -hmm and um, pinwheel out from, from vessels. Um, here you, um, probably a fatty tumor with ropey collagen and spindle cells, much less mucin in this one. Oh, you think it's been like the uh, spindle cell? This is a very spindly spindle cell like almost. Mm -hmm. So they can go from very <laughs> mixoid or very fatty or very spindly. Whatever combination of spindle cells, ropey collagen, mm -hmm. and lipocytes they want to have. The biggest differential, especially with the staghorn like vessels in the background, fellows, anybody? Yeah, solitary fibrous tumor. Um, CD34 likely to help you a lot there? No, because both are CD34 positive. So solitary fibrous tumor versus um, spindle cell lipoma, um, both of them can have staghorn vessels. 
um, the key would be, although solitary fibrous tumor, I guess rarely can infiltrate fat. Normally it pushes fat out of the way and is just a nodule, whereas the fat is an intimate part of the spindle cell lipoma. So spindle cell lipomas, common lesions, incredible spectrum. So no one is cookie cutter just like the other, right? Um, but recognizable. So if you were putting together a certifying exam for the specialty of pathology or something like that, you might want entities where not that are common, but not all cookie cutter and um, do very well to distinguish between those people who have looked at a lot of tissue and those people who have only superficially read the textbook, right? Dr. Elton, I think there's a relatively new amino stain for solitary fibrous tumor. STAT6 is used to distinguish those from the next okay. the couple of years. Very good. Thank you. We should review that. Okay. So this is got a nodule of tissue. It looks like we have a couple different tissue types in here. There's some sort of eosinophilic um, kind of solid looking cellularity. There's also some entrapped fat. So there definitely is fat. Some blood vessels too. And the blood vessels, are they thin capillary like blood vessels or thick muscular blood vessels? They are thick muscular looking blood vessels. Thick muscular and does the muscle end with the vessel or does it keep on going as part of the tumor? It kind of spins off and keeps on going as part of the tumor. kind of spins off and keeps on going as part of the tumor. You can see these vacuolated cells. Remember smooth muscle has to work for a living so it always carries its little glycogen <coughs> snack in its back pocket <laughs> as these paranuclear vacuoles, right? And you maybe could even talk yourself into these being a little bit pinwheel-like, spiky heading off from the central vessel. So what do you think this might be? Uh, pretty good for an angiomyolipoma. An angiomyolipoma. So the angiomyolipomas, when multiple in the kidney, are pathognomonic for? Tuberous sclerosis. And when solitary in the skin, are pathognomonic for? Nothing. I mean, usually they're just sporadic tumors <laughs> in, in skin. Um, so in the kidney, when multiple, they fall into the pecoma group. Um, but the solitary cutaneous ones are not markers for, for tuberous sclerosis. Okay, let's just keep on going around. So it looks like <coughs> you know, pretty thin epidermis and in the dermis, there are some thicker, more pale eosinophilic things among the collagen. Okay. Um, they're not making a discrete nodule. Um, and w one of the hints is mm -hmm. the color. You noted that it's paler. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same color as a granular cell tumor would be. Um, one of my fellows described it as the color of everything that Barbie owned. <laughs> right? So it's that Barbie pink color which is characteristic for both granular cell tumor and also smooth muscle. So this is the pilo. This is the one that comes off the erector. Muscle. Yeah, or it differentiates towards the erector pili muscle. So it's in the dermis um, and again is kind of pinwheel-like, the way mm -hmm. these stick out into the dermis. S so a pyloliomyoma, when solitary, associated with nothing, when multiple, especially when multiple in a blastoid segment, a marker for? Anyone want to jump in? Reed syndrome, so what are the components of Reed syndrome? Fuming kidneys. Fuming kidneys. Why fume? Fumerate. <laughs> so fumerate <laughs> hydratase. You are a man of few words. Very good. So fumerate hydratase <laughs> deficiency. And then tell me about the kidneys that are fuming. What are they in the kidneys? Renal cell cancer. Yeah. And what kind of renal cell cancer do they get? Oncocytomas. 
Um, so Ankasai Tomas go with Bert Hog Dubay, oh, right. whereas Reed gets papillary carcinoma. Um, so papillary carcin renal papillary carcinoma familial, which makes it kind of important, right? And with a marker of usually segmental multiple lyomyomas from loss of heterozygosity in a, someone who has a germline mutation in fumarate hydratase. This looks like a Bednar. So, Bednar tumor is a good. Oh, sorry, thought. that's, that's um, not. I misspoke. I thought it was crud or pheasant actual pigment. Um, so, I'm seeing a diffuse spindle cell proliferation. They're in fascicles going multiple directions. They look like smooth muscle. What, what makes you think they look like smooth muscle? Because it's the cigar blunted end. So they are long, blunt ended cigar shaped nuclei. I think they're stacked with them. And? <laughs> and they have their glycogen snacks. They have their glycogen <laughs> snacks in their back pocket, right? So when you look at cross section, each one has its little glycogen snack. There is a little paranuclear vacuole. Um, so they're hard work and smooth muscle, mm -hmm. and are the nuclei all uniform, or is there some... There's pleomorphism. There's pleomorphism, some are very large and mm -hmm. hyperchromatic, and when you look at it at scan, is this the cellularity in terms of number of nuclei of normal benign smooth muscle, or are there... Quote, too damn many nuclei. The latter. Yeah, so there are too, <laughs> too many nuclei, right? Yes. So it just has too many nuclei to be benign. It's not mm -hmm. the cellularity of normal smooth muscle. And yet it still runs in fascicles, and they're blunt cigar shaped nuclei, and they have their little glycogen snack when cut in cross section. <coughs> so it, this one is a lyo myo sarcoma. Sarcoma. Very good. And um, um, Chris Fletcher and some of the other soft tissue guys um, want to um, call them atypical smooth muscle tumor and not use the term lyomyosarc. For the um, cutaneous ones, um, they behave like a lot of other cutaneous sarcomas in terms of being locally aggressive but low incidence of metastasis. So certainly hasn't caught on among the derm path people, so people still tend to call them. Okay, so there's that kind of interesting change in the skin, but underneath you got yeah. this. Um, looks like maybe some sort of fibrous, dense fibrous stroma. So question is, is it dense and fibrous? So. Do fibroblasts work hard enough that they have to carry little vacuolated Snake. snacks of glycogen? <laughs> no, sir. No, this would be a much harder working group of <laughs> cells, right? Yes, sir. They're hungry. Uh, so y it, it looks like there's almost like little world nodules of smooth muscle now. Yeah, and they are configured around these flattened lumens, right? You can say lumen or lumina, but lumina sounds a lot like a Chevy, right? Um, so you got lumen filled with blood, and around that you got a thick muscular wall, and where does the wall end, or does it end? Does it just keep on going? It just keeps going. So this is, actually there are a number of flattened lumens, right? And then the whole rest of this marble-like nodule is composed of vascular smooth muscle. Mm -hmm. So what would you call that? Um, maybe in... Angiolyomyoma? Like an angiolyomyoma. <laughs> That's exactly what one would call it. And um, the lyomyomas as a group are often spontaneously painful because they cramp up. Right? So it's a muscle capable of cramping. Okay. So looks like we've got a lot of cellularity with kind of fat in between there's so first and vessels there as well. A lot of cellularity and a lot of vessels. And what descriptions might you use for those vessels? 
Just the stag. Yeah. Crow's feet. So all kinds of names have been used for these. Crow foot, vessels, um, chicken wire, vascular pattern. See how they kind of anastomose and they <coughs> kind of branch out. Mm -hmm. So um, crow's foot, chicken wire, chicken footprints in a dusty yard. <laughs> All of those <laughs> terms. <laughs> Most of us have experienced chicken footprints in a dusty yard. Thank you. Um, so, um, city folk. So, um, and then when you look at the lipocytes, are they all similar in size and shape, or are they all over the place in size and shape? No, they're way different. Way different, all over the place in size and shape. In fact, some of them have a central nucleus which is distinctly scalloped rather than round and vacuole, so it's a mulberry lipoblast. And some of them are tiny, tiny little circles with an adjacent nucleus, which would be a signet ring lipoblast. So it's just filled with both types of lipoblasts, circles of different sizes, Arborizing vascular pattern. What might this be? Does this give you a warm and fuzzy feeling overall? No. So okay. It's like a liposarc. Liposarc, exactly. So liposarcs as a group tend to be deep tumors of intramuscular fascia in the proximal extremity or deep retroperitoneal tumors but not infrequently they burrow out to the surface and are first biopsied as part of a superficial biopsy. But on MRI, they're clearly contiguous with something deep and nasty. So it looks like you just have an encapsulated fat nodule in a deep dermis. In Subcu subcutis, sorry. Yep. So encapsulated area of fat. It doesn't look like there's any nuclei there, so and it's probably an infarcted nodule like fat necrosis with reactive yeah. fibrosis around it. So you are absolutely right that this is localized fat necrosis with a fibrous capsule that has formed around it. And um, you can call it localized encapsulated fat necrosis, or the clinical term for it is mobile encapsulated lipoma. We get um, these for a frozen section all the time because the surgeons think that it's metastatic tumor. Yeah. And um, the very common location for us to see is breast, um, where it's a solitary <coughs> breast nodule that someone feels. and. Um, you can also see it abdominal wall, other places, and it's usually you picked up your nephew and he kicked you, and <laughs> um, it's now 18 months later. You don't even remember the kick in the sore spot, but you've got a lump, and someone takes it out, and it's just the localized encapsulated fat necrosis. So encapsulated fat necrosis or mobile encapsulated lipoma. Okay. Let's do some lightning rod rounds, not lightning rods. <laughs> <laughs> Although they could be lightning, <laughs> you don't want to be the lightning rod for the lightning rounds, right? Okay. Is that where you ask one person all of them? No. <laughs> oh, yes, the lightning rod for the lightning round. Very good. Excellent. Someone pass that easy button over there. Go right ahead. That was excellent. Go ahead. You deserve. You earned it. It's sort of a good easy button. Oh. <laughs> go ahead. That was easy. There we go. Look, it didn't work. Excellent. <laughs> That's a tough easy button. Okay. Dan. <laughs> All right. Um, so you see what appears to be collagen with um, some sort of mixoidy. So collagen with mixoidy stuff and the collagen, would you say these are extremely thick bundles? I don't think so. Or kind of thin, long, narrow bundles? I'd say the latter. Yeah, one might even say ropey. Um, so thin, ropey collagen, mixoid areas. 
And then over here, just a few fat cells. So. A spindle cell lipoma, and what do you would you call a spindle cell lipoma with hardly any fat? The Steve Billings very cleverly called these low fat spindle cell lipomas, and then there were the ones that have no lipocytes, which he called non-fat spindle cell lipomas, right? And he did a very nice job of presenting these. He, of course, made the unfortunate choice, brilliant man, but he made the unfortunate choice of using 5% as his cutoff for a low-fat spindle cell lipoma and got all kinds of grief because people say, everyone knows low-fat is 2%, yep. right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but his concept of low-fat and non-fat spindle cell lipomas are very helpful because you may not think of spindle cell lipoma in the absence or relative absence of lipocytes, um, and yet the myxoid change, the spindle cells, the ropey collagen, everything else is there. Uh. Is this lightning from this chapter or from all of pathology now? Um, we were doing fat, muscle, and bone. Just like um, But we will jump from this to all of mankind <laughs> because that would be more helpful to you ultimately. <laughs> right? Um, al although um, I can guarantee that on your exam, if you take one, every if question <laughs> will will have a helpful footnote as to which chapter <laughs> it came from. That would be fair. Yes, that, that will make you feel so much more secure. <laughs> so <laughs> they will do that extra helpful little thing for you to, to tell you. And um, for everyone practicing pathology, every slide will also come with the chapter <laughs> designation <laughs> up in the corner. It's right. your book, right, Dr. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, very good. Yeah. Looks like we're still in the chapter here. <laughs> <laughs> well said, James. <laughs> um, so we have the, you know, some old cells uh, throughout, some ropey, I mean, I can't imagine it be another one of those things again, but. I, I feel like it's a spindle cell lipoma again, <laughs> approaching low fat. So, very good. So there are lipocytes, um, I'd say probably more than 5% here, okay. but, <laughs> but it's not, um, they're not tons of lipocytes. Um, there is more myxoid change, ropey collagen, but again, it fits nicely into that whole spectrum of spindle cell lipoma. Again, they're quite common. Everyone's a little different, so they are entities that, if you were looking for something to test, would probably distinguish well, discriminate well. So an angiolyomyoma, except that it has, what are oh, these little things? An angiomyolipoma, because it has some fat in it. <laughs> if solitary in skin associated with? Nothing. Nothing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Adam. Um. Just <coughs> definitely spindle cell pro proliferation, kind of organizing in some fascicles. I thought I saw some glycogen snacks in a different kind of cut there. And out at the periphery, they kind of look like spokes of a pinwheel, mm -hmm. right, which is what smooth muscle tends to do. So out at the edge, instead of being encapsulated, the things that come from um, pilar smooth muscle tend to be spiky, pinwheel-like out at the edge, like the points of a pinwheel. Um, tell me about the number of nuclei here. Yeah, Is so it seems like it's, you know, the nuclei are kind of increased in number. Um, there's uh, 
kind of some there were some hyperchromatic ones I thought in the other cut I was kind of concerned about um, Lyomyosarc maybe but so there's pleomorphism hyperchromasia if you went to higher power you'd see both a fair number of mitotic figures and atypical mitotic figures so this is in fact a Lyomyosarc but the hint at scanning power is that it has that pinwheel-like configuration of a lyomyoma, pyloliomyoma, and yet it has far too many nuclei. It doesn't have the normal proportion of nucleus to cytoplasm that normal smooth muscle would have. So there's definitely fat, right? And it's quite large. So let's go a little higher. Does this look like muscle, or does it look like thin ropes of collagen against a paler <laughs> background? <laughs> Spindle cell lipoma, again, <laughs> common, <laughs> endless variation, and, quote, it still gets me every time, which is why it tends to distinguish those who've done a lot of study from those who haven't done a lot of study, which is why... <laughs> <laughs> um, or someone who's a first year versus someone who's ready to graduate and <laughs> practice in an independent manner. So if you were a psychometrician looking for an, a great question that would distinguish a group of candidate ready to practice in an independent manner from those who are not, um, it you know would fall into that broad rubric probably, right? Mm -hmm. And you can kind of think of things like that on your own that would fall that into that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, sir. This one looks more kind of slammed up almost against the epidermis. Kind of slammed and fellows. If you were coming up with distractors for this, with the overlying acanthosis and the large sebaceous glands, what would you list as a distractor? DF. I probably go, would go dermatofibroma yeah. because you see that sebaceous induction, you see, I and mean, that's a scan that's very dermatofibroma like, mm -hmm. right? With sebaceous induction mm -hmm. and ac acanthosis. So let's go a little higher. So. Could this just be a dermatofibroma? What's wrong with these for being fibroblasts versus smooth muscle? They're hard workers. They're hungry, right? They got their glycogen vacuoles. Mm -hmm. That's not fibroblast-like, that's smooth muscle-like. So that would be a clue that this is probably not dermatofibroma, but so probably just a pyloliomyoma. Good. Would a Becker's nevus be similar? Um, so Becker's nevus or smooth muscle hamartoma would be similar, but they're usually very well, um, very discrete smooth muscle fibers demarcated in the dermis stand apart from one another and are oriented similar to normal smooth muscle, okay. just too much of it. Okay. So that would be smooth muscle hamartoma versus a tumor of smooth muscle, um, which would be a lyomyoma. So. So, this pink perforation in the dermis looks more um, smooth muscle perforation. Like smooth. Okay. And at the end, it's certainly not encapsulated. 
Um, we don't see the edges because it goes to the lateral borders, so you can't see any pinwheeling. Um, but it's certainly fascicles and not encapsulated, not a marble, no so vascular lumens. Muscle or, or is this more of a tumor, so maybe a lyomyoma? All right, so here looks like we got a couple of nodules that look a little, maybe a little calcified. And yeah, they're um, well circumscribed. They're almost kind of, oh, I mean, it sort of looks like bone. Yeah. Yeah. Beyond, beyond calcified because yeah, I mean, it has little osteocytes. osteocytes in there. So, so what would you call a little localized area bone in skin? Oh, this is like the. Uh, Osteoma cutis. Osteoma cutis. Yeah, yeah. which is um, usually it's old acne, old healed acne that just forms these little miliary. It's like your face is full of birdshot. All these tiny little things. Patients hate it because they're pigmented too, so they look grayish and they're hard. Your face isn't soft, it's full of birdshot. And so if you make tiny little stab wounds with an 11 blade and just get a needle like a 20 gauge needle in there you can just pop out and you have you know jars of little pellets that you pop out of someone's face and takes hours so you train an assistant to do it and the patient is there for several hours but you will never have a more grateful patient as when you rid their face of these things so so benign but troublesome. It's called Christ, we've got a punch biopsy. And uh, looks like there may be some few sort of collections of sort of spindle from up here. Kind of in the upper reticular dermis. So absolutely and tell me about the reticular dermis itself. How um, what kind of a human being would have very dark red, very small collagen bundles? Like a, uh, a small human being? A small human <laughs> being, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the junior set, so that's kid skin, right? So this is a biopsy of kid skin, and in the kid skin you've got these smooth muscle bundles. And they don't look that abnormal, except that there's just a lot of them, right? Usually you have one erector pili muscle. Here you just have a lot of erector pili muscle. What would be a disordered accumulation of tissue normally found in an area? Well, I'd call that a hematoma. You would call that a hematoma. <laughs> what would you call a hematoma compo composed of smooth muscle that is congenital? I would call it a congenital lyomyomatous hamartoma. Or a congenital smooth muscle hamartoma, uh, yeah. absolutely correct, <laughs> which is in a spectrum with Becker's nevus. Um, the um, both smooth muscle hamartoma and Becker's nevi tend to have an increase in terminal hairs. So it's a, you know, the classic. Um, in a kid, the smooth muscle hamartoma is just a plaque. It, the Becker's nevus is usually a young man with a wolfman patch on his shoulder. So let's see if this is worth. Ah, there we go. It definitely looks like there's almost a, a nodule of this proliferation so of spin muscles look like smooth muscle. Definitely a nodule of smooth muscle and at the edge is it more encapsulated or are they more like spokes of a pinwheel coming off of the edge? Mm -hmm. it looks more like spokes. Okay, so what do you think? I think it's a pyloliomyoma. Pyloliomyoma, very good. So I've seen a, a large 
fat tumor that kind of has that chicken wire look again, and then varying adipocytes. So I would think more of like a myxoid liposarc. And at scan, that's exactly what it is. So you have <coughs> arborizing vascular pattern, chicken foot, chicken wire, crow's feet, dusty yard with the chickens running around. <laughs> <laughs> um, You've got liposites of varying size, and you've got mixoid background, so mixoid liposarc is absolutely correct. Um, looks like we've got uh, some mixoid, um, uh, just like, or cartilaginous, maybe. Yeah. Cartilage. It's, again, it's that steel gray color of chondroitin sulfate, which would be a cartilaginous type of mucin. And then you have this little chondrocytes. And is there a lot of pleomorphism and vacuolization like the chordoma had? Um, these seem more regular. Yeah. More like just a lump of cartilage yeah. that doesn't belong there. So what would you call an Oma of chondrocytes. <laughs> yes, exactly. So just a solitary chondroma or cutaneous cartilaginous tumor. You can use either term. Got definitely fat, really vascular. Yeah, really vascular. So what would you call an angiolipoma? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Angiolipoma. So angiolipoma, <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> well done. Um, this looks like an angiomyolipoma. Um. So I don't see much smooth muscle. I mean, uh, if there's a like little, the periphery, yeah. yeah. If this, if that's muscle, then absolutely angiomyolipoma. If that is ropey collagen, then um, more like a spindle cell lipoma, angiolipoma crossover. So that would be key, and then you just go one power up and yeah. determine which it is. Okay, very good. With the remaining little bit of time, let's grab a regular potpourri box and let's do <laughs> 10 <laughs> minutes. Why, are they, um, why do they say that they're always painful? Because we never really see them when you notice them. Oh, the, In, the painful? Yeah, any of the angio. Um, because the smooth muscle cramps. Oh. Okay. Um, so things, that. <laughs> things that will be painful are things like neuromas mm -hmm. that have nerve that can be compressed, um, or commonly things um, like um, that are smooth muscle induced because it just goes into a cramp. Okay. Um, and then you have things like spiradenoma. Why spiradenoma would be spontaneously painful? Who knows? But it is. Okay, let's see if we can burn through. <laughs> okay, Dan. So deep dark nodule and. Is it just nuclei, or does it also have pink cytoplasm around the nuclei? There's, there's some cytoplasm. And then does it have tiny little round lumens in it? So with a little squinting, a few little round lumens, but... So what kind of cutaneous tumor would not palisade, would be well circumscribed, would have clear cell change, polygonal cells with cytoplasm, and focal round ducts? I'm sorry, you may have said it. You want to jump in? Yeah, a hydradenomal poroma group of tumor. Very good.
<laughs> okay. Would that be like a dermal? Mm-hmm. I'm getting them all mixed up. So uh, trichomoma. Trichomoma. Very good. Why trichomoma? Classic cow pen sign there at the edge. So um, you may see. I'm having trouble making out a real good thick basement membrane zone on this one, but it is palisaded, and it has clear glycogenated cells, and it hangs down from the epidermis. And then in areas, it is spiky with hyalinized collagen, so desmoplastic trichomoma. Very good. And does it really slam against the epidermis, or is there more of a spared zone and yeah. then the hypercellular tumor? Exactly. So it looks like a DFSP. Mm-hmm. So DFSP would be for a hypercellular spindle tumor that has single file lipocytes. Mm-hmm. DFSP would be a very good guess. Excellent. Okay, why spire adenoma? Uh, just three different kind of cell populations, blue balls in the dermis. So blue balls in the dermis with ducts, no cytoplasm, no pink cytoplasm, just nuclei, and the nuclei vary from dark gray to pale gray to jet black lymphocytes that pepper it. One of the fellows, you want to jump in? Resolving keratoacanthoma. Resolving keratoacanthoma. You have a crater filled with keratin, and this, hard to imagine that this skinny little epithelium would have given rise to that mass of keratin in the crater, and yet you still have tiny little bits of elastic trapping at the edge in the epithelium, so this is absolutely regressing keratoacanthoma. Like a smooth muscle tumor. Some blood vessel associated. And I don't think I really saw any cats, maybe just an angiolyomyoma. So, sort of like an angiolyomyoma, except it has all of these round cells that are forming rosettes around the lumen. So, um,. Any any other thoughts? So if these are the peri cells that are perivascular. So this is a myoparicytoma. So myoparicytoma is uh, has these rosettes of the round cells. So it looks at scan kind of like an angiolyomyoma, except that it has these rosettes of the round parasites. So myoparasitoma. Large nodule in the dermis. Um, it's got some <coughs> sclerotic stroke around it. Uh, Looks a little bit like. 
So I quite like a square eyed node, but um, there's some activated clear cells here. Yeah, so a spire adenoma would have no cytoplasm, mm -hmm. right? Just three colors of gray to black cells. Um, this one has plenty of pink cytoplasm and little round lumen like spaces and doesn't palisade and has clear cell change. Yeah, this Paroma. Paroma, acrospiroma, clear cell, hydradenoma group. Very good. All right, so we got another large, like, kind of nodule in the dermis and subcutis here. There's some collagen spherules. Okay. Um, so they're either collagen or they're hyalinized basement membrane zone around tiny little vessel little lumen. So it's composed. Do you see any cytoplasm? No, not really. So blue cells, no cytoplasm, hyaline droplets of basement membrane zone forming blue balls in the dermis, so but they... Like the spiradenoma? Spiradenoma or cylindroma, um, in that they kind of fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. Those two are very closely related tumors and with that I think we're right at the hour and we're done. So thanks for everyone who joined us online.